talk. Ah. <laughs> Ow. I'm really here hoping I finish this <laughs> this review. This is also why I was so iffy about making this in the first place, because I like ugh. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie. Welcome to my book talk section where we have drinks together and talk about books. So today's drink is actually going to be a my version of a mo iced mocha from Starbucks, but decaf of course. And it's ultimately one of my favorite drinks ever. And just to note, actually, I am usually not a memoir reader. I tend to lean more towards any sort of fiction or if it's based on something that is real but is still fictional that's usually what I gravitate towards so I actually didn't know this was a memoir even though the cover literally says a memoir I kind of just bypassed that I had like selective vision or something when I saw the cover because the cover itself was very interesting to me but <laughs> I fell in love with this book, so let's get right on to the book description. So I will be reading the book description off my Kindle since that's how I read this book. When it comes to the trials and triumphs of becoming an adult, journalist and former Sunday Times columnist Dolly Alderton has seen and tried it all. In her memoir, she vividly recounts falling in love, finding a job, getting drunk, getting dumped, realizing that Ivan from the corner shop might just be the only reliable man in her life and that absolutely no one can ever compare to her best girlfriends. Everything I know about love is about bad dates, good friends, and above all else, realizing that you are enough. Glittering with wit and insight, heart and humor, Dolly Alderton's unforgettable debut weaves together personal stories, satirical observations, a series of lists, recipes, and other vignettes that will strike a chord of recognition with women of every age, making you want to pick up the phone and tell your best friends all about it. Like Bridget Jones' diary, but all true, everything I know about love is about the struggles of early adulthood in all its terrifying and hopeful uncertainty. For all, like, this book is just that. It is literally the experience of this author going through what she went through between the ages of, like, 20-something to 30. And I kid you not, a lot of the stuff I can relate to, well, m most of it, like not all of it, but most of it. And I thought it was just a very interesting read. So the reading time on the Kindle, it says typical time to read is five hours and 12 minutes with 368 pages. It took me maybe a week or two to finish reading this book. So because it was a lot to unpack and there were just some things that kind of had to take a pause on because it kind of struck a... <laughs> It kind of struck a chord with me. So right over here is the book cover in the Kindle. I will have a colorized version right next to it. So it does say everything I know about parties, dates, friends, jobs, life, love. And she has all the words but love scribbled out. She does talk about all the things in this book cover, but at the end of the day, it all revolves around love. We all come from love and we all come back to love. This cover really interested me for so long when I saw it on the bookshelves and I finally got around to reading it since it's available on Kindle Unlimited. My thoughts in this book are more on the positive side and again I did rate this 4 out of 5 stars on Amazon because it was just very touching and very self-reflecting like it really helped me reflect on my life choices a lot and the choices I'm making now along with the choices I want to make in the future about a lot of stuff when it comes down to relationships, friendships especially, and just living life as a woman. <laughs> oh, and also this book contains food recipes. Like I just had so much fun reading it. I cried, I laughed, like it was just exactly what a conversation with a friend would be. Even though this book takes place on the other side of the world, there were still a lot of situations that I could still relate to and I'm pretty sure many of you guys can relate to as well because at the end of the day, we're all just women and girls just trying to figure ourselves out and just go through life as it, you know, as it comes. And this book did a really great job at expressing that. 
This particular book really touches upon friendships as well, which is a really big thing for me. I have maybe a good handful of girlfriends that I can trust and go to whenever I need help with something or if I just want to talk about something I feel like I could talk to them about this. I couldn't really relate a thousand percent to what Dolly went through when she was feeling all the things she felt about her best friend being married but the fact that you we're all growing up it's just like <laughs> when you reach the age where your friends are all getting married and having kids and you aren't there yet but it's also the fact that you don't know if you want that as well for yourself you want to keep having fun but everybody around you is just you know settling down and having this whole like picture perfect life that we all thought we wanted I was just like darn it you know like I'm at that point in my life where I want to still have fun like I'm not ready to get married and have a child and live in a house or anything like that I'm just like damn <laughs> I'm not the only one who feels this way and it was just really nice to read. The author also discusses things about like taking therapy and also not being able to tell her friends about what was going on with her and how she was feeling about certain things and that also like bro like I'm gonna be trying not to cry throughout this review because uh, like it's just hard because when you you read something and it's like it hits you personally it's just like what the what like <laughs> and I'm a very emotional person also I'm on my period so it's just like that just amplifies the feelings I'm feeling about this whole thing all right let's talk about the highlights because I have quite a few and some of them may make me cry it may make you cry but if it gets you wanting to read the book you know like just to hell with it, I guess. One highlight I will discuss from the book is the love we have for each other stays the same, but the format, the tone, the regularity, and the intimacy of our friendship will change forever. And in this section, she's talking about how in friendships, you know, people get married, people get pregnant, people change. And you know, even though we all say things, you know, things won't change, everything's still going to stay the same, we're still going to hang out, we're still going to do this and that together. Ultimately, really, it changes. And I could really say this from personal experience, like me and my best friend since fifth grade, me and my best friend since 2017. You know, we're growing. I'm in a whole different phase from where both of my best friends are at. Like my best friend in Connecticut, she owns a house, a business, and all that fun stuff. And then my other best friend, she has a family. They have different priorities. It's not just about hanging out and having ice cream and talking about boys anymore, you know? It's now I'm gonna be hearing discussions about businesses. I'm gonna hear discussions about families, home things. And not that I don't like it at all, because I do. It's very actually interesting learning from them what it's like to be an adult in two different ways you know i get to learn firsthand from them the mishaps the fun awesome memories of finishing building a home together um what it's like to have a kid like that's that's pretty heavy for me considering i don't have any and i didn't i definitely don't plan on having one anytime soon so I get to learn firsthand what it's like without having it myself and I really appreciate them for that but you know it's not like I could <laughs> come over at like three in the morning upset over a boy you know it's a whole different ball game now and some may take it as a bad thing like oh you don't want to you know be my best friend anymore and stuff like that but I see it as like a learning experience I think it's pretty cool that my friends are doing these things while I'm not, you know? And I'm pretty sure there are things that I'm doing that they're not doing, which they find really, really cool, you know? So I thought this was a very interesting quote because I'm just like, friends, we all do change. And we either grow and learn from it or 
you know, it grows apart and there is no friendship anymore because now you're at a point where you don't understand each other or y'all are not on the same wavelength. So it really just, it's a matter of how you take it. I take it as a really fun experience. Although sometimes, you know, I miss my best friends. <laughs> I miss them. Oh my God, another highlight. And this one I got so excited to read about because this is what I'm dealing with in my life right now. And I have been dealing with this for the past three years, I think now. It's been where I'm experiencing, experiencing this. I've loved paying my own rent. I adored cooking for myself every day. I even used to get a thrill sitting in the GP's waiting room knowing I registered and got myself there without the help of anyone else. When I tell you that living alone is a great, wonderful experience, I'm telling you this from the bottom of my heart, probably even deeper than that. Like it's just, if there's one thing that I really enjoy while being in my 20s right now is having the experience of living alone. I know that there are a lot of people that don't have that luxury to have that kind of experience and believe me, it's a one of a kind experience that I won't ever regret. You learn so much about yourself and it really helps you figure out how to solve certain problems and it's just amazing. I started living completely on my own just maybe a year or two ago. I had my own first apartment and that came with a lot of issues and I got to learn a lot about the things I'm willing to tolerate and the things I'm not willing to tolerate. So when I read this quote, I'm like, yeah, like I, I love this for me. I love being able to tell people that I have my own place and I'm in love with it. And I am responsible for all these things. Like this is all mine. Like nobody could tell me that, oh, like you can't use this or like, you know, this should have been done earlier, blah, 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 blah. Like I don't get to hear any of that because this is all me. I know a lot of people don't have that luxury or may not have that luxury to be able to do whatever they want with their space because of like who they live with or something. Um, but I was very lucky and fortunate to have that experience. I'm really grateful for the, the roommate experience. I'm glad that I basically was able to live like a Sims lifestyle for anyone who's played Sims, like the original one on the PlayStation, there's like a story mode. So you live with your mom, you find a job, you have a roommate, a very messy roommate at that actually. My roommate is like my best friend, she wasn't messy or anything. So I'm glad I didn't have that part of the experience. And then you find your own place and then you, like you get married and stuff like that. That's how the storyline in the original Sims game for the PlayStation worked along with the GameCube. So I was very happy to have that experience and then I'm going through that right now pretty much. And I love my apartment now. I was just so grateful to have the apartment I have now because I always told people that with my first apartment, it was like, it's for the plot. <laughs> it's for my character development. I will have something better than this by the time my lease is over and lo and behold I had I have now an amazing apartment that's a bajillion times better than the apartment I had before and I'm just like yeah it's definitely for the character development for me to be able to appreciate everything that I have now even more. There may be background noise and I apologize for that I have no idea where it's coming from but another quote that I actually really enjoyed reading and I'm glad that she brought this up is more often than not the love someone gives you will be a reflection of the love you give yourself if you cannot treat yourself with kindness care and patience chances are someone else won't either and this is definitely a very very powerful quote in this book because yeah it is a thousand percent true whatever you give to yourself is what others are going to be giving to you as well because confidence, self-love, all of that, it shows. And nowadays, at least, I mean, a lot of people are like are more into the whole self-love, self-care kind of thing. Back then, I'm not sure if that was a big thing. Like growing up, I don't recall that being such a big thing. But now at least I'm glad that that's, you know, coming up more and more in conversations. So I'm going to just leave it with one more highlight. And it is, 
I am whole and complete. I will never run out. And I am more than enough. Parentheses. I think they call it a breakthrough. I, I'm going to just be very open and honest. A lot of my life I spent just wondering if I'm enough or like, why am I here? You know, like I'm so curious as to find out what is my purpose in life? What am I meant to do here? All that mumbo jumbo. I had my own little breakthrough and it, it's just so revolutionary personally whenever like I had these kinds of breakthroughs. I didn't know what my life was really going to be like. I had an idea. But I didn't really think that far ahead because it was just a matter of like, I don't know where I'm going to be tomorrow. I don't know where I'm going to be in five years. I don't know where I'm going to be in 10 years. I don't know if I'm going to even make it, <laughs> you know, like, it's like life is so unexpected. And, you know, there's that saying like, always expect the unexpected. So it was just like, along with all this, you know, it's just, it was very hard. You know, it was just very, it's very tough to believe that you are enough for yourself and enough for somebody else and i feel like this that line was just so mm, it was really mm, I don't know. you my friend are enough and if anybody tries to tell you different just know that at least i think that you are enough if whoever is watching this this review like <laughs> I'm gonna just finish this now because if I don't I'm gonna just keep tearing up about every little thing about this book so in conclusion I do find this book to be absolutely great especially if you're a woman just like in like your 20s 30s just figuring out life and oh especially if you're somebody who doesn't know what they want in life like you're not sure what like path you're going to take you you don't know what's going on like everything seems to be happening but your life feels very stuck or you feel like you're just not doing what you thought you would be doing like you you've had a plan it didn't work out and now you're just like well what do I do now you know, if you're in that point in your life too, I feel like this book is very useful and very wonderful to read just so that you know that you're not the only one going through this. We probably, if you ask anybody, what are they really going through? Like what's really going on? They're probably gonna tell you that they don't have it all together. Even though it looks like they do, they most likely don't. A lot of what social media shows us isn't real, but we're so glued to it that we think that this is how we're supposed to live and if we're not living this way that you know we're not doing a good job in life or something like that so if you're somebody who's going through something similar to that this is definitely a really good book to pick up just so that you know that it's not just you this is somebody who's literally telling you all the struggles that they're going through, all the things that they've gone through, everything that they felt in the process of it, whether it came down to friends, jobs, relationships, family, stuff like that. This is a really great read for that. And even if you have it all together and you everything is going exactly how you want it to, it's still a great book to read. It's very fun, very funny, very <laughs> emotional in a way. I do respect the author for certain parts of the book as well. She you know, would explain things that would happen to her friends, but anything like super personal to their lives, she did not include, which was wonderful. I do like that she kept some of the things that her friends have dealt with in private. There are things that we don't have answers to, which is totally fine because at the end of the day, you know, these are real people. These aren't like fictional characters. So another thing just to note that I really appreciate about it, the book itself. And yeah, I rated it four to five stars. It's very fun read. It's a memoir. With a little bit of everything really that you would expect life to have it was really great and i'm so glad that i got through the review before i like kept on crying <laughs> thank you so much for watching i do have another review that i'm supposed to be doing and it's for the grace year 
I'm not sure if any of you guys have heard of that book, but I also found it on the Kindle. It's actually a pretty great book, so I can't wait to review that as well. So until then, have a great day, have a great evening, and have a fantastic week, and I will catch you guys later.